מזימי. אני צריך. מונה מונה. אינסטגרם. So why did it look better from the other side last week? Can I move it? I'll move it. All right, Mr. Graham, you're just going to have to bear with us. Okay. And then we find out what, what happened last week, because it looked better when, when I was over there. Oh, look at that. I think that'll work. You think that's better? Yeah. Now you can see both of us. When it's over here, for whatever reason, you can't see both of us. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning. So... I'm drinking some coffee. I need to wake up. I think you do too. So I'm going to do that and get myself, you know, I need to wake up. If you had those scriptures, I can go ahead and put them in. Change that. Hmm? Change that. Here. Change it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Pumpkin spice. I can taste the pumpkin spice. So good morning to our marriage matters family. Facebook and Instagram. Today is Saturday, October the 9th, and I feel like I am on the news and I have to bring you some news, but I'm not doing that. It's just a conversation between Millicent, myself, and you so that we can better be equipped to deal with what life throws at us. And no matter what we face in this life, we have all of the options of support, which first and foremost comes from the Word of God. It is a ton of resources in that Bible. And though we feel like we have to go to other humanoids for a lot of different things, we should first take our concerns, cares, petitions, anger or whatever it is that we have we need to go to God so he can help direct us in the path that we need to go in order to solve life's problems which comes daily as long as you live so with that being said and then he also puts <coughs> other people in your path <coughs> people he sees in your path uh -huh. to help guide and direct you oh of course mm -hmm. and those people sometimes are permanent fixtures mm -hmm. And then sometimes those people are seasonal people. Mm -hmm. They're only there in your life for that specific season. Mm -hmm. So that's something to consider as well. So today, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> allergies. So today we'll be taking a look at why do rose petals fall. And we, I don't know, I've seen roses. My wife saw some roses last week. I don't know if they're still in there. I think they have um, moved on to the other side. Mm -hmm. But why do rose petals fall? And we're going to kind of have a conversation <laughs> about that. My wife doesn't know much about this one today, but we're going to work it together. So there are some reasons why rose petals fall and there are four categories meaning that the first one it could be weather conditions the second one could be pests that attack the rose the third one could be infestations or fungal disease something that is coming from within the rose and then the fourth one is let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. So the, fourth, the third one was infection, in infestations. And the fourth one, it could be fungal disease. Uh, we're going to just have a conversation because 
in most people's eyes, when you look at a rose, it has a splendor and a beauty about itself. But at some point, it begins to wither and it the petals begin to fall from the rose. So again, I discussed that weather conditions can be an issue. Pests that attack the rose itself can be an issue. Infestation from within or fungal disease. Mm -hmm. So if we start with the weather, the weather is the same as life, unpredictable. We think that we can predict weather because of patterns and meteorology, and sometimes we are on point. You know, we know what days it's going to rain, we know what days the sun's going to be, how high it's going to be, and some days, totally off. A shower shows up in a space where they said it wouldn't, the sun is hotter in a space where they said it wouldn't be hotter, you know. And then there's wind that gusts in areas where they said it would be calm. So just like life is unpredictable, the weather is unpredictable. But no matter what's going on, that rose finds a way to maintain itself in those weather conditions. Now at some point, that rose will wither. At some point, the petals will fall. But the weather conditions pay a good factor in how that rose develops. Adequate amount of sun, adequate amount of rain, good soil, you know, those things are conducive for the rose to be able to grow and to be able to re re reproduce after itself. So that's the first one. Talked about weather conditions. So I want to transition. Let's see. I think I put them in order. So let's go to Matthew. I hope I put that in order. Matthew chapter 16. I think I'm looking at this right. Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 3. Let me make sure it is correct. Matthew 16 and verse number 3, people. Let me see. Matthew 16 and verse number 3. 3, 3. Uh, <coughs> I'm trying to wake up y'all. Matthew 16 and verse number 3. Let's go there. Let's go there. Sixteen and verse number 3. So it's talking about the weather. So in verse number 2, he replied, When evening comes, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red and in the morning. Today it will be stormy for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. And so, while we're talking about this rose and why the rose petals fall, and we talk about the weather conditions that need to be conducive for the rose, we also need to understand that there are other conditions that we should be aware of as we live this life. You know, we see um, more open things on TV that we knew about that when we grew up, they weren't allowed to ever be shown on regular te television. It would be on cable or something else like that. Now, you have people doing all kind of foolery directly in the presence of children. So people will say, well, if your children are watching this, maybe you should find something else for them to watch. Mm -hmm. But they're going to do their narrative because they're following what they want to follow. But the Bible says that we should understand the signs of the times if we act like we can predict the weather. So, you don't have to subject your children or your nieces or nephews or cousins to any of that foolery that's on TV. You can provide them with options to look at something else, but <clears throat> it is a whole different kind of ball game. <clears throat> and I am not going to bite my tongue. So, again, those that view this telecast, 
podcast, whatever you want to call it. Millicent and myself believe in marriage between a man and a woman. We have our God-given right to have that opinion, and we're going to sit on that until we leave this earth and see our Heavenly Father when it's all over. So, there's no disrespect to nobody. We have our belief. That's what we believe marriage is between a man and a woman, and that's where we're going to set our flag. So, <clears throat> predicting the weather is something that the Bible says that we do on a daily basis. So, I want you, Marriage Matters family, <clears throat> excuse me, goodness, I want you to think about where we are, what you see, how things are changing. People will shoot at you if you blow at them now. They will shoot at you over a disagreement. They don't have the sense of the common courtesy to be able to speak it out and talk it out. Some of the stuff that they're shooting and doing violence over doesn't add up to even an altercation. It's just a conversation. A word, excuse me. They don't want to hear that. They want to inflict pain. So, the signs of the times. You know, debauchery. You know, no feelings of empathy. You know, wanting to be angry all the time. A brawler. Those are those things that are showing up. So when we talk about the signs of the time, I want you to be very clear about what you see, notice, and experience. And how you're going to protect your families and your marriage and your job situation in the process. The people that see God, they see them through you. So what do they see in me? What do they see in Millicent? What do they see in you? The weather is a reason why it could be an impact on why rose petals fall. So now let's talk about pests, okay? We're going to move on to pests. And we're going to look at 1 Kings, looks like, um, I'm going to go to 1 Kings 8 and 36. 1 Kings chapter 8, 36 and 37. Let's look at that. 8, 36, 37. So, <clears throat> it says, Then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel. Teach them the right way to live and sin reign on the land you gave your people for an inheritance. When famine or plague comes to the land, or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshopper, or when an enemy besieges them in any of their cities, whatever disaster or disease may come, and when a prayer or plea is made by anyone among your people, Israel is being aware of the afflictions of their own hearts and spreading out their hands toward this temple. <clears throat> then, hear from heaven, your dwelling place. Forgive and act. Deal with everyone according to all they do, since you know their hearts. For you alone know every human heart, so that they will fear you all the time they live in the land you gave your ancestors. <clears throat> so, this basically is talking about attack that will happen. And it definitely will happen. It said, whatever disaster or disease may come, and when a prayer or plea is made by anyone among your people, Israel, being aware of the afflictions of their own hearts and spreading out their hands toward this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Forgive and act. Deal with everyone according to all they do, since you know their hearts. That's them praying, talking to God. For you alone know every human heart so that they will fear you all the time they live in the land that you gave their ancestors. So God knows your heart. That lets me know because when we talk about pest, a pest is something that normally attacks from the outside. Pestilence. Grasshoppers, locusts, mosquitoes, flies, what's some of the other things, those stink bugs, mm -hmm. all them things, they attack stuff. I have a pecan tree outside and stinks bugs just 
eat all the husk, the green husk off the pecan. I don't know if that's their job, and then the pecan is going to fall. All I know is they're attacking my tree. I'm trying to give me some decent pecans, and it has been difficult. But those are pests that are attacking something that is rooted and grounded in fertile ground, and that's trying to produce after itself. Pets, they come to attack. That is another reason why rose petals fall to the ground. Now, <clears throat> infestations, that's something from within. So let's go to let's go to Mark chapter 7 and 21. We talk about infestations and what is this? Infestation and fungal disease. Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 7. What did I say? And 21. Okay. 10, 7, 21. Hey, I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to see why it's not allowing me. Okay. Mark 7 and 21. I am almost there. 7 and 21. All right. So it says, For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. So, that's not me saying that that's you. We're talking about why the rose petals fall. And so when we're talking about life, there are some things that <clears throat> sometimes we allow in that we think are little cute, cutesy things. Mm -hmm. But then they begin to fester and grow. Right. And even though makeup may look make you look beautiful on the outside, even though money and stuff may make you look successful on the outside to other people, there's an infestation of something that's growing on on the inside. Who wants to be their own enemy when we already got another? Exactly. And it's another one and another one and another one. The devil does not fight fair. He is not on Team Johnson, mm -hmm. Team uh, Jones, Team Washington, Team Kelly, Team Hernandez, Team whoever. The devil is not on those teams. But the that's devil. why going back to, to First Kings... When it was seen, basically, you just go before God and make your petition known <clears throat> when those pests come. The thing is, you can't do that if you, I say it all the time, if you're not walking with your spiritual eyes wide open and you think, you know, oh, everything is okay, everything is lovely, and you're just walking around, you know, like that, and your eyes, your spiritual eyes are not open, that's when the pests come, and it will destroy your, your from the inside. Yeah. Your foundation, which causes the rose petals to fall. So the rose petals are the beauty and the glamour and the glory set that everybody else sees, right? So, but then at the end, if you don't get those things in check, what do you have? A naked bud? Yeah, a naked bud. But I want you to hold on to that thought. Okay. I'm glad you said something because we're going to talk about this. Okay. And, uh, and that's going to be based on what you said. Okay. So, <clears throat> 7 and 21 again. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. Understand the signs of the time. Make yourself aware of what you see. You know, porn and all kind of foolishness. Make yourself aware of what you see. Understand that the eyes are the gateway to the soul, to the heart. Which one? I just want to see something right uh -huh. now. Go ahead. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Ooh, these allergies. But the eyes are the gateway to the soul and the heart. So, you want to make sure that you understand you are being attacked from the outside because the enemy is doing that and you're also being attacked from the inside. Something, something's going on. Mm. That's why That's why I went over there. We might be having an issue 
It's saying that it's lying. No. E oh. <coughs> okay. Okay. We thought we weren't live because we didn't see anything. So we're still trying to figure out if somebody's on here or not, but it really doesn't matter. God is good. Okay, there we go. Okay. I just wanted to make she sure. She just sent sure. herself a, a, a Facebook message to make okay. sure we're in good shape. Right. So <clears throat> going back to what I said about pets, the infestation, the fungal disease, mm -hmm. those are attacks that can be from the inside, and that can cause the rose petals to fall. So now... We want to look at uh, Isaiah 41 and 10 because there are some answers that God has given us that we can easily use in, 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 and provide others with a sense of hope. Isaiah 41, and I think I said 10. Let's see what we have. So, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So, all who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. And because we know that the enemy does not fight fair, he is the one that's sending all of these things. Okay? He's the one that's sending all of the attacks. Now, sometimes we have a a role to play in it too. That's why we just talked about the point before about being attacked from within, meaning you're allowing something in and now it's eating and withering your your rose or withering your <clears throat> or withering your spiritual walk from within. Now we're talking about how no matter how that may be, even though your rose petals may fall, God has an answer. And that answer is in Isaiah 41 and 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Mm -hmm. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. And then it says that those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish though you search your it says though you search for your enemies you will not find them those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you do not fear I will help you God ain't gonna never let you go he ain't gonna never let you fall to the wayside the decisions that we make and the choices that we choose to embark upon can make us go in that way. But the hand is always extended to us, excuse me, the hand is always extended to us that he's there to pick us up out of our foolishness. Now, we're going to go to another scripture, and it is 1 Timothy 3 and 16, and then we're going to talk about something else. First, second, oh no, 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 second Timothy, I'm sorry, second Timothy 3 and 16, I said the wrong thing. Let me go, let me go. Second Timothy 3, mm -hmm. in verse number 16, it says, uh, All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Again, at the beginning when we started, I said that it is okay. And Millicent said that God does put people in your life for seasons. And when they do bring a word, you need to listen. But that should be the first place that you go. She should not come to me. She should go to him. I'm second. God is first. So Millicent should go to God with that petition. She should go to God about that concern. Then she can come to me. I ain't the one. He's the one. So it says in here that all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, which rebuking means correcting, um, training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That means that one, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He didn't make no mistake. While my teeth not straight, he didn't make no mistake. I walk with a lip. He did not make a mistake. 
My eyebrows are not the same on both sides. He did not make a mistake. My hair is thinning. He did not make a mistake. That ain't the only thing that contributes to your beauty. That's not the only thing that makes you who you are. <clears throat> Let's focus on what sets you apart from everybody else. Millicent doesn't have the same fingerprints that I have. We surely don't have the same parts. <laughs> and so, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a creation uh, after God's own hands. So, again, you are, you are thoroughly equipped for every good work. You have the answers are there for you. If you hear that, that means my dog is going off. So, you know, um, or I want you to know, that God is there for you. Now, there's another scripture that I want to talk to you about. It's Isaiah 43 and verse number 19. And then we're going to go back. We're going to go back, people, because we're going to land the plane. Isaiah 43 and verse number 19. I think I said, so let me go here. So, it says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. So, we talked about at the beginning, why do the rose petals fall? My wife is sitting next to me. She's a beautiful rose. She got a glow on. And why do rose petals fall? We said because of weather conditions. That could be a reason. We talked about the pests that come to attack and destroy. Mm -hmm. Then we talked about the infestation that could take place from within. Because sometimes it's not what the devil is doing. It's what we've allowed for ourselves to intake mm -hmm. and not address. And then finally it could be from fungal disease. That could be outside or inside. Mm -hmm. So, there is a process for a rose that happens because the rose petals fall. The rose petals are falling because it is preparing itself for a new beginning. I just talked to you in uh, uh, Isaiah 43 and 19. It says that <clears throat> Going back, going back, going back. See how I'm doing a new thing now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals <clears throat> honor me. The jackals and the owls because I provide water in the wasteland and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen. The people I formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise. So, <clears throat> Rose petals fall because there is a potential new beginning. There is a process, and the word is called deadheading. That is a process where you remove the dead rose petals so you can make way for the bloom. There are two ways that you can do that. You can either remove the dead rose petals, or you can take the whole core out and get ready for the new roles. Deadheading is a process that has been practiced for a long time and that deadheading does produce a new, more vibrant rose. The rose is going to produce itself whether or not you take the petals off because they will fall. But if you want to see that blossom come back quicker, then you would pull those petals off that no longer provide the protection, uh, that no longer is absorbing any more nutrients or water. Mm -hmm. And now here it is. At some point in time, because of the deadheading, a new rose will appear. It faced weather conditions. It faced pestilence. It faced 
infestations, and there are sometimes was fungal disease. But throughout all of that, you still had Isaiah 41 and 10, you still had 2 Timothy 3 and 16, and you still have Isaiah 43 and 19 to give you a sense of hope that God is not going to allow you to be alone. That the rose petals that fall to the ground is only setting you up for a new beginning. The season that you're going through now, it may not be the one that you want. But again, you're being pruned so that you can be ready for your new beginning. The people that God has placed in your life to be able to talk to you about anything and everything that's going on with you, it is the season for which you're being prepared for your next level move. So I hope that I will take away that eye. We are partnering with you that this next season for your life will be a season of blessing. It will be a season of total like understanding of where you are in life and what your expectations are. It will be a season of I will go to God first for everything and everybody else and anything else is secondary. And it will be a season of total blessing uh, because God doesn't make mistakes. Y'all finna go? Mm -hmm. All right. Love you. Hey, y'all be safe. Hey, get her those papers that are on the table. I think those are for her. <clears throat> Check and see if she signed those for her phone. Mm -hmm. Oh. Check the table right there. And so, as we get ready to close out, mm -hmm. I'm just want you to know that, you know, Millicent and I, we love you. We want you to experience the best life that you can. And life is going to throw you some things. But I definitely don't want you to be your own problem, right? We want you to focus in and understand and recognize when you're being attacked. Recognize if it's something you've allowed to come from within. Understand that the weather patterns are unpredictable and that's how life is. But where you are rooted, we want you to be rooted in prayer. We want you to be rooted in God's word. We want you to be, we want you to create a, let's say, what's the word? We want you to create a system of that's the first place where you go is to him for whatever we want you to create that system so that that's a pattern of behavior that people see you do because they're watching you just like they're watching us so we want you to have a great and outstanding Saturday I hope you understand why rose petals fall but I also hope you understand that there is also a new beginning after those rose petals fall. Protect your family in prayer. Protect your mind, your soul, and your spirit in prayer. Protect the people on your street in prayer. Protect the people that you work with in prayer, those that are with you and those that are against you. Because you set the standard of excellence when your feet touch the ground. Millicent sets the standard of excellence when her feet touch the ground in a bedroom and she's ever getting ready to go to work. I set the standard of excellence when my feet hit the ground because we are a team. The message that we want to convey to our kids is no matter what we face, no matter what we experience, they know that we are our biggest fans in good times and bad times. So, I am going to go and have some fun. And we will see you on next Saturday. Okay. I want discuss you to do some more marriage matters. Because you know marriage, marriage matters. matters. Oh, we got to do it again. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> see you all next Saturday to discuss more marriage matters. Because, because your marriage, marriage matters. matters. Bye. Have all a right. great one.